Okay, so this video we're going to talk about the second form that you have for quadratic functions. So I backed up in your slides a little bit from the examples that we did from the previous video. So um, I just wanted to talk about your formula. So you have the first form that we talked about, the previous method that we talked about, which is the a times x minus h squared plus k. So you can recognize that form. You'll have something in parentheses that's being squared and then plus or minus something out there on the end. So you're immediately going to know that that is the form that looks just like your transformations and so you can immediately tell exactly what the vertex is. The other form will not look like that. It will look like three separate terms like you see there. So you have ax squared. It's not by design. It's not by coincidence here but that's the same a that you've talked about previously that tells you whether that parabola opens up or down that same thing applies here if that value for a is positive that parabola is going to open up and if that value for a is negative it's going to open down so you're still going to use that exact same thing previously but if you are in this form the way you're going to find that vertex, the way you're going to find that ordered pair is it looks like a daunting formula, but it's really not. It's really just one thing here, which is the way you're going to find x is you're going to take the negative or the opposite of whatever the value is for b up here. So whatever b is, you're going to take the opposite of b and divide it by 2a. So 2 times whatever your value is for a. That's going to give you the value for x, or in your other form, what we call h, but that's just the x value. So that's the way you're going to find x is minus b or negative b over 2a. And then the way you're going to find the y value at that vertex, the way you're going to find that value for y is you're going to take what you found for x and you are going to plug it into your formula. So when they have this f of notation, that's just telling you take what you had for x and go plug that into your formula to find your y value. So don't make it look like a daunting formula. You're just taking whatever you found for x, plugging it in and finding y. Okay, so let's take a look at a couple of examples here. So if we go down your slides just a little bit, so this first example here says f of x is negative x squared plus 14x minus 47. So I can't just look at that and tell you what the vertex is. I've got to use my other formula. I've got to use the minus b over 2a because it was given to me as three separate terms. So here's my value for b. My value for b is 14. And then my value for a is minus 1. So that's a negative there, so negative 1. So the way I want to find x is I'm going to take negative of b, so minus 14, divided by 2 times a, which is negative 1. And so that's going to be negative 14 divided by negative 2, which is going to be positive 7. So my vertex is going to be at 7 comma something. And so the way I'm going to find the something is I'm going to take that value that I just got for x, that's 7, and I'm going to plug it into my formula for x. So I'm going to take my function and I'm going to evaluate it at 7. That's all that formula is saying, is take that value for x and plug it in. So f of 7 is going to be equal to, now be careful with your signs and such, the negative of, I want you to be, notice where I put my parentheses there, when I have negative x squared, it means I take my value for x squared, whatever that is, and then take the negative of that. So I'm going to take the negative of 7 squared plus 14 times 7 and then minus 47. So be really, really careful with your signs. So I'm going to do my order of operations. So I'm going to square 7 first, which is 49, and then I'm going to take the negative of that. So it's going to be negative 49. And then 7 times 14 is 98, so negative 49 plus 98 minus 47. So negative 49 and negative 47 is negative 96 plus 98. That's going to give me positive 2. And so my vertex is going to be at 7 comma 2. So I had to, it takes a little bit more work than just left, right, up, down, but you can still get there. It's not any different than um, any other problem that you've done. You just got to memorize the formula. How you find x is do negative b divided by 2a, and then just take that number that you get for x, plug it in, and you can find your y value. Now, this question down, the second question here says, find that relative max or min without graphing. 
that when I say without graphing I mean without using your calculator but we can draw a very rough mini little sketch of this graph so if we were to just draw an x and y axis then 7 2 is over in here somewhere again I'm just drawing a very rough sketch so there's my vertex it's 7 2 and then I immediately go back and I look at the fact that my value for a was negative because that was negative 1. We used that when we plugged into our formula down here. I forgot to put the a underneath there. Sorry about that. So we know a is negative so that immediately tells me that my graph opens down. So I was immediately able to draw you a just a rough sketch by no means an accurate sketch whatsoever of what that graph looks like just by finding the vertex and knowing that, that it opens down. So now I immediately know that that value there at 7, 2 is a max. So the maximum is at y equal to 7. But again, that occurs when x is equal to 2. So don't forget, I said that completely backwards. My apologies. My maximum is at y equal to 2 when my x value is 7. Sorry about that. So my maximum occurs when y is equal to 2 and that corresponding x value is at x equal to 7. So don't forget it's an ordered pair, but again, when they ask you about the max, they're asking you about the y value, which is 2 in this case. So then, just like we've done in the previous examples, I immediately can tell you what my range is. So my graph never goes above that line right there, which is at y equal to 2 and it opens down so it's going to negative infinity so I can tell you that the range of that graph is from negative infinity up to and including 2 so we use a bracket to include 2 and then again as I said previously there, this may be another question that they ask you is on what intervals is that function increasing or decreasing so again the domain of this function is from negative infinity to positive infinity because it's a quadratic function it's polynomial and so if I'm reading this graph left to right, this portion of my graph now is increasing. That portion is going up if I'm reading left to right. And that portion of my graph is from negative infinity to my, y, my x value, which is at 7. I keep saying x and y backwards. My apologies for that. So from negative infinity to 7. So from negative infinity to 7, that function is increasing. And then when it gets to 7, it turns and goes back down and decreases. And that is from 7 to infinity. So negative infinity to 7, that function is increasing. And then from 7 to infinity, that function is decreasing. Again, look at x. Don't look at your y values. Look at your x values from negative infinity to 7. So this portion on the x-axis from negative infinity to 7, that portion is increasing. My graph is going up from left to right. And then when I get to 7 and I go out to infinity, that's where my graph is going back down. If I'm reading left to right, that's where it's decreasing. So other than me saying my x's and my y's backwards, I apologize for that. That is an example of where you have a trinomial that's given to you. It's a quadratic function, but it's given to you as three separate terms. And if it's given to you in that form, the way you're going to find the vertex is you're going to do the minus b divided by 2a. So I'm going to stop the video there, and I'm going to do the other example on a separate video because just to make sure I didn't run too long on this video.